Good evening. My name is Michael Morton, and uh, I was convicted of murdering my wife. Uh, news flash, I didn't do it. In 1987, Michael Morton was sentenced to life in prison for stabbing and murdering his wife, Christine. 25 years later, a judge overturned his sentence and set him free. After it was proved, he did not commit the crime. His freedom was won by Cardozo's Innocence Project and took years of work by consecutive groups of law students working at one of the school's oldest and most famous clinics. What makes the Innocence Project uh, effective is that it taps into something uh, very fundamental on a spiritual level that people understand. Uh, and that is this whole struggle that our clients and their families uh, engage in to overcome injustice. In 2013, during her third year of law school, Rachel Pecker worked on Morton's case with attorneys Nina Morrison and Barry Sheck. It's incredibly heavy. Um, when I'm, I was on phone calls where the attorneys were on the phone with Michael, you're listening to someone who on the other phone line is in prison, has been there for a long time, is claiming they're there wrongfully, is in pain. Um, and I'm sitting in an office in New York um, trying to convince him that we're doing the best we can and hope that he's doing okay and try to lift him up. Um, but at the same time, we didn't know if we would have good news for him. In 2011, the Innocence Project was able to make a major breakthrough in Morton's case. A bloody bandana had been found near the scene of the crime, but the blood sample had never been tested for DNA evidence. The clinic fought for five years to open up the case and finally won the court's approval to examine the bandana. Thankfully, it showed that Christine, uh, Michael's wife's DNA was on it and that there was other DNA and it wasn't Michael's. And that was a huge victory because that was likely the man who did it. Um, but we still weren't sure unless it, that DNA, the male DNA on the bandana, matched to another perpetrator in the CODIS system, um, in our database of criminals. Um, we weren't sure whether Michael would be able to get out. Um, the prosecutors could have come back with another theory of the case. Actually, Michael did it with another friend. But prosecutors' theories couldn't explain how the DNA matched with Mark Allen Norwood, a man who lived a few miles from Michael and his wife at the time, and who had been implicated in the stabbing murder of another woman. And then that was the huge step forward. When we got that, it was total disbelief. And we um, got him on the phone, and um, it wasn't a normal day that he could be on the phone, but the warden realized if the Innocence Project had been calling so frequently, something really was happening and was a very kind man. And he got Michael, and he got him to the library, and we finally were able to share um, that he was going to get out. And it was um, right after his birthday, which, and um, that's also the day after his birthday is when Christine was killed, and this is all, all had happened 25 years earlier. Um, and then it must have felt like a whirlwind to him, and it certainly felt like a whirlwind to me. Um, and Cardozo makes sure that if you're working on a case where there's an exoneration, Cardozo paid for me to go down and join our team, and that's how I got there. Um, and it was incredible to be there, totally incredible. Morton was freed from prison on October 4th, 2011, and officially exonerated that December. He's written a book about his experience called Getting Life, an innocent man's 25-year journey from prison to peace. It was published in 2014. Certainly what happened to him is not ordinary, and he's not an ordinary person. He's a pretty um, amazing person. He's gentle and kind, um, incredibly articulate, and... Um, working on his case, being part of the lawyers and seeing what it took for them and me as a part of it to do to get him out. Um, and then seeing how he emerged. Um, those are the things I'm most proud of and I will keep with me forever.